Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, God, for how you moved in the service this morning, how you spoke to our hearts. And Lord, we position ourselves one more time this evening for you to reveal yourself to us. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, would be in this room tonight. Show us things from your word that we can put into practice. Lord, help us to grow and to become a little bit more like Jesus tonight. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.
His strength and power, we can look forward to victory. Amen? 2020, God helping us to walk into everything that He's promised us. Praise the Lord.
you, Jesus. But your word says in Hebrews chapter 13 that you're the same yesterday and today and forever, God. You're that anchor for our hearts. You're the rock that we can stand on tonight. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence that inhabits the praises of your people. Lord, we pray that your presence would fill this room tonight. Teach us. Draw us closer to you as we open up your word tonight. We give you the glory. We give you the praise for all that's done. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Things taken out of context in reference to this. 
But God wants to speak to us that though we may feel insignificant, though we may feel like our church is insignificant because we're not a large church with all the technology and the programs that maybe some other churches have in town, God wants to grant us what we're requesting of Him, just like He did for this seemingly insignificant man named Jabez. And as we look at 2020, I hope that we look at it uh, from the point of view, God, what do you want? What are your desires for my life? What are your desires for my family? What are your desires for my involvement in ministry? And that we would make some requests of the Lord, just like Jabez did. He prayed. We ought to pray more than anything uh, as we look uh, to setting some goals and having some dreams for this new year. We ought to say, God, what do you want? What do you intend for my life? What is it that you want to accomplish in me and through me in this new year? We ought to pray that for our church as well. We're going to spend some time doing that as we look at this verse and break it down a little bit. We're going to pray for our own lives and make some requests of God. And if we pray in faith, God answers the prayer of faith. Amen? And we're going to believe the Lord for our own lives, for our families. We're going to ask God for our church that He would speak to us. Amen? That he would show us his direction, his wisdom, his strategies for the ministry of Finish Work Worship Center. And I believe that's what God wants us to do as we close out 2019. And as we look with hope, with anticipation to what God is going to do. How many believe he's a good God? Amen. God's a good God. He wants to bless us. He wants to open up all the promises, all the treasures, all the blessings of his word to us. But they come when we ask, and they come when we ask in faith. And so I want us to look at some things. I have a scripture in there, Zoe, Proverbs 29, verse 18. If you could pull that up. Proverbs 29, verse 18. It says this, Where there is no vision, the people perish. That word perish means you're in the process of dying. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, again referencing the word of God, Happy is he. If we look at that verse, and just leave it there for a minute. If we look at that verse, talking about the prayer of Jabez, asking the Lord to bless us and to help us in this new year, asking him for clarity, for perspective, for a vision for 2020, uh, it tells us in this verse where that vision ought to come from. It ought to come from the Word of God. It ought to come from the Bible. We need to make sure that what we're believing God for, what we're dreaming about for our own lives, for our families, and for our church is, first of all, biblical. Where there is no vision, that word vision in, in uh, the original language, it says revelation knowledge. How can we have revelation knowledge? God has given us this book, amen, to reveal himself to us. So if you, if you read it, what like the original language says, it says, where there is no revelation knowledge, it says in some translations, the people cast off restraint. They're in the process of dying. They're not living in blessing. They're living in cursing or curse. They're cursed because they're not going God's way. So we need to say, God, I want to get into your word. The goals, the ambitions, the dreams that I have for this new year, God, I want them to be scriptural for my life. I want them to be scriptural for our church. If we find out what the Word of God says and let it shape our vision, let it shape our perspective, give us clarity in what we see for the future, it says we're going to be happy. Amen? We're going to be blessed. So where there is no vision, the people perish. We need to say, God, give us vision. Amen? But the, he that keeps the law, he that looks to the Word of God, says, Holy Spirit, help me live this Word every day. It says, happy is that individual. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I think we have that in there as well. It says, but as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that do what? Love Him. Amen? If you have no other goal in this new year, it ought to be, I'm going to love God. And I'm going to love people because God loves people. And I'm going to love God and I'm going to love people. And if we do that, this verse tells us, and this is actually a quote of an Old Testament scripture in Isaiah, almost word for word. It says, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for you. And those are good things. Amen? 
blessings that we have yet to ever see in our lives before, God says, I have those in store if you'll just love me. Love me in the way that I want you to, going by way of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, having proper faith, spending time in the Word and being yielded to the Holy Spirit. If we'll love God in that way, there's no limit to what God can do in our personal lives, in our families, and in this church. And so I want us to look at these uh, parts of uh, the prayer of Jabez. We have it in a PowerPoint. And I want us to just take some time tonight. We're just going to pause on a couple of these different slides after we look at them. And then we're going to pray and into what the, this verse is saying. Again, when you pray into the Word of God, you're praying the will of God. And if you pray the will of God, you're going to have some good results, amen, some good answers to prayer. And so I want us to look at that. Do we have that PowerPoint? So that first slide, I want us to take this first part of verse, uh, first, first Chronicles 4, 10, the prayer of Jabez, where he says, bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Can we just take a few moments tonight, if you're watching over Facebook Live, it's not a normal type of message, but would you respond to God's Word? We're going to put God's Word into practice real fast, amen? We're going to hear it and pray into it, but let's say this prayer tonight, and let this be a guide for just a few moments as we take a few moments to pray, and let's just say for a few moments, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as I exhibit proper faith in Jesus and the cross, would you please, like the prayer of Jabez says, bless me indeed. What do we mean by that? This is what I want us to have in our minds as we pray for a few, mo few moments uh, after we look at this. Number one, how do we want God to bless us indeed? Growth. Amen? Do you desire growth in your spiritual walk? Spiritual ma maturity in the sanctification process. That process of us becoming a little bit more like Jesus. That's one of the ways we ought to say, God, bless me indeed. Help me to grow, to mature in, in becoming more like Jesus. Number two, we ought to say, Heavenly Father, give us, bless us in this way, bountiful provision for my physical, material, emotional, and spiritual needs. I think that's a, a biblical prayer, don't you? God, would you help us? Give us bountiful provision. Let's pray for a few moments. God, bless me indeed. Bless me with enough to bless others around me too. And that's the way God blesses us, doesn't he? He gives us enough, not just for us, but He gives us enough to where we can share with others. It's overflowing from our lives. And let's believe the Lord for that. Can we just take a few moments and uh, let's believe the Lord. Let's pray for our own lives. And let's pray to this uh, verse. We'll just leave that slide there if you want to look up there as a guide. Let's believe the Lord for that. Would you pray with me? Let's all just seek the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just love you tonight. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice upon the cross. Lord, we thank you for this story of Jabez and his simple, seemingly insignificant prayer that we read here in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. And Lord, we just ask, Lord, as we place our faith in who you are, Jesus, and what you did for us at the cross, your finished work, we ask, like Jabez did, would you bless us indeed, Lord God, Lord, we want to grow spiritually in this new year. God, we don't want to become stale or stagnant in our faith, not progressing. Uh, we don't want to be stubborn and unable to be moved by your Holy Spirit. But God, we want to grow. We want to become a little bit more like Jesus. Lord, forgive us where we failed you so often in this past year. God, I pray that we'll see victory in the new year. That we won't fail you in those same areas in this new year. But God, that we'll learn lessons from those times of failure. God, that we'll become a little bit more like Jesus each and every day. Lord, we ask that you would bless us indeed by giving us bountiful provision for our material, physical, emotional, spiritual needs. God, may we look to you as our source, not to the work of our own hands, not to the ways of the world to meet our needs. God, help us to realize that you are, as we said this morning, El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. You're our sustainer. And God, forgive us for looking to lesser loves to provide what only you can provide in our lives. God, be our source of life and living. Be the one who gives us bountiful provision. God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider in this new year. Lord, we're believing you for that, for our own lives, for our family. Lord, we ask that you would bless us indeed. 
God, give us blessings, enough for us, but also enough for others around us. Lord, help us to realize that you blessed us so that we could bless others. God, we don't want to hoard all the good things of God to ourselves and never share them. God, we want people to see your goodness in our lives. We want to testify of the times that you heal us. We want to testify of the times where you bring provision in our lives. We want to testify of the wisdom, the answers that you give us for the difficult decisions that we face. So God, speak to us, bless us in these ways tonight. God, let our families walk in these same blessings. Lord, we just give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in 2020 in these areas. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, next slide. This prayer, he says... Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. The King James says enlarge my coasts. Same, same meaning, enlarge my territory. And I want us to pray into this as well. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as I exhibit proper faith in Jesus and the cross, would you please bless me indeed and then enlarge my territory. What do we mean by that? We're asking the Lord to expand our sphere of influence for the gospel's sake. How many know we could either be a bad or a good influence? We can influence somebody uh, for the wrong things, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to be a stumbling block, right, for somebody. In fact, the Bible warns us of causing a weaker brother or sister to stumble by our freedom. And so we better be careful of that. But we want to expand our sphere of influence in a positive way, in a constructive way for others around us. We want people to be inspired. We ought to, amen, by what they see God doing in our lives. And so let's pray that God would expand our sphere of influence, that we can touch neighbors for the gospel's sake, that we can touch co-workers, people that we know in our own generation, people in the marketplace, that God would use us to have an influence upon them for the gospel's sake and enlarge our territory in that area. Number two, that God would enlarge our territory, give us a greater harvest of souls from our witness and from our ministry, what we get involved with. That God would give us a holy boldness to speak up. The devil wants us to be quiet, right? Shut your mouth, quit making waves, uh, stop stirring the pot. And God is saying, no, sometimes we need to speak up. Amen? We need to give testimony to how awesome God is. We need to point people to Jesus and the cross as their answer instead of some cute cliche that we too often let come out of our mouths. So let's believe the Lord to enlarge our territory by giving us a harvest of souls. And then number three, um, that God would enlarge our territory by broadening how the Holy Spirit uses us, each one of us, in the gifts of the Spirit for the cause of Christ. We've been praying that for our church, that God would allow the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. Well, with the church is made up of each one of us, amen? And if we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, the next step, uh, when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we speak in tongues. That's not an arrival point. That's a gateway for God to use us in the gifts of the Spirit. And so we need to believe the Lord for our own individual lives, that those nine different gifts that 1 Corinthians 12 talks about, that are gifts of the Holy Spirit, that they would be in operation as God chooses. Amen? We don't get to command God regarding that, but we can say, God, I'm available. The Lord, would you use me? And I believe the Lord wants to do that. Why are the gifts of the Holy Spirit necessary uh, for enlarging our territory? Because it says that it brings exhortation, edification, and comfort to the body of Christ. And as Jesus' return gets closer, we need more exhortation, edification, and comfort. And that's going to come as we say, God, I'm open, I'm available to be used in the gifts of the Spirit. So can we just take a few moments and pray into uh, this part of the verse, enlarge my territory. Let's ask God to help us in that way tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you again in Jesus' name. We thank you again for the example of uh, Jabez and his prayer. His simple prayer to you, God, asking, Lord, that you would enlarge his territory. And Lord, we just ask for each one of us that you would expand our sphere of influence for the gospel's sake. We each have people that we uh, cross paths with all the time, whether it's at school, whether it's neighbors, whether it's people in the marketplace, people at church. God, I pray that we'll be ever so aware 
of how desperate and broken and lost the people are in our own city. And God, expand our sphere of influence. Help us to influence people in a positive way with the Word of God, with the testimony of Christ, so that they might get saved. Lord, we're asking you to enlarge our territory by giving us a greater harvest of souls from our witness, from our ministry. God, you told us that sometimes we're going to sow a seed and someone else will water it, and you'll bring the increase. We may not see that person uh, make a decision for Christ the first time we sow a seed into their heart. But God, I believe in you for a harvest of souls. I believe in you, God, that we'll see people uh, make a commitment to you, give their hearts to you. Lord, let us be a part of evangelizing Colorado Springs with the good news of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Give us a harvest of souls. Lord, I pray that you would enlarge our territory by broadening how the Holy Spirit uses each one of us in the gifts of the Spirit. Let this be a church where the gifts of the Spirit are in full operation. Lord, tongues and interpretation of tongues, prophecy, words of faith, words of wisdom, healing, faith, miracles. God, we want all the gifts to be manifested in this place, not for our glory, but for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be a church that's uh, experiencing exhortation, edification, and comfort. Lord, let those gifts of the Holy Spirit be in operation. Give us a desire to seek you for those gifts. Lord, use us as you choose in the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, we'll just give you glory. We'll give you praise. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, so the verse, the prayer of Jabez says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. We need to pray that, not just tonight, but as we go into this new year, Oh God, that you would enlarge my territory. We just prayed that. All right, and then the next one, it says, Be with me. Be with me. That was Jabez's prayer. And I want us to pray into this part of the verse. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as I exhibit proper faith in Jesus and the cross, would you please be with me? What do we mean by that? Number one, let me sense your manifest presence whether good times or bad. Amen. Isn't that a good prayer for this upcoming year? Because we're going to have both. We're going to have good times. We're going to have some bad times. But God, let me sense your manifest presence, no matter whether I'm in good times or bad. Number two, remind me, if you are with me, who can be against me? Romans chapter 8 tells us that. If God be for us, who can be against us? It may seem at times in the new year, through tr the trials and adversity that we go through, that the whole world may be against us. But if God is for us, who can be against us? And that's what we ought to pray, that God would remind us that He's with us. Amen? Number three, pray that God will be with you by saying, help, help me to have greater intimacy and closer fellowship with you. Sometimes God is close, but we're too busy focused on too many other things to even recognize that He's there. We need to ask the Lord for a greater intimacy and a closer fellowship with Him in this new year. Can we pray into these things tonight? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, once again we ask, God, as we place our faith in who you are, Jesus, and what you did at Calvary, God, would you be with us in this new year? God, help us to sense your manifest presence. God, your tangible presence in bad times, as well as in good times. God, I pray that we'll not be full of pride, thinking we can handle things on our own, but God, that we'll recognize that we need your presence. We need uh, your Holy Spirit with us. We need your power, your presence with us. And God, just help us, Lord, to, to know that you're with us and to sense your manifest presence. Lord, help us to be reminded that God, if you are with us, who can be against us? No enemy, no demon in hell, could stop the work that you want to do in our lives if you are with us. God, if our faith is in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, Lord, I believe that you're going to be with us. You're never going to leave us. You're never going to forsake us. God, give us reminders of that in the new year. Let us not uh, feel abandoned. Let us not feel lonely or alone in what we're facing. But God, help us to know that you're there with us. Lord, help us to have a greater intimacy and a closer fellowship with you. God, as we read the Word of God, as we spend time in prayer and fasting and praising and worshiping You, participating in the ministry that You have us to be involved with, God, uh, worshiping You in church, corporately, God, I pray that in those times, 
through those spiritual disciplines that will be drawn closer to you. God, that we'll have uh, a greater intimacy with you in this new year. God, that we can know your voice, that we can walk close to you. God, we just give you praise, we give you thanks for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. All right? First Chronicles 4.10, Jabez says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. And then the last thing he says, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Keep me from evil, that I might not cause pain. And I want us to pray into this uh, tonight as well. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as I exhibit proper faith in Jesus and the cross, would you please keep me from evil? How do you know when you get saved, that doesn't mean the devil just throws down all his weapons and says, okay, the fight's over, he's given his heart to Jesus. No, the fight is really on once you get saved. Once you start being used of God, the enemy wants to oppose you even more. And there's a warfare going on. We need to recognize that even as believers, we need to say, God, keep me from evil. Uh, number one, don't allow the devil, the thief that John 10 talks about, to steal kill and destroy in my life in this new year. We ought to ask the Lord to help us with that. Number two, help me to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of you. All right, next slide. Number three, when we're asking the Lord to keep us from evil, we're saying give me discernment to know the difference between the holy and the profane, to know what's of the Holy Spirit, and what's of another spirit? And so can we go back one slide? Let's pray into these uh, things tonight. And let's believe the Lord uh, to help keep us from evil uh, as we go into 2020. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you again for the lesson of this prayer of Jabez. And God, as we anticipate great things in the new year, would you keep us from evil? We know that God... The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to rob us of the blessings, of the promises, of the good things that you have for us. We pray that you would keep us from evil. God, that his wicked schemes and his fiery darts would not prosper, but God, that they would be defeated in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of you. God, let the passion of our heart be to know you, God to know you and the power of your resurrection, the fellowship of your sufferings, being made conformable to your death. And God, anything that gets in the way of us knowing you, God, I pray that you would cast it down in Jesus' name. Every wicked scheme of the enemy would fail. God, that you would keep us from evil. Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom and discernment to know the difference between the holy and the profane, to know what's of your Holy Spirit and what's of another spirit, demon spirits. God, help us to not walk in, in things that are going to make us susceptible or vulnerable to demon spirits, another spirit. God, help us to have our faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified so that we can have the full benefit, the full power of the Holy Spirit helping us to live a victorious Christian life. We believe you for that. Lord, we thank you for that. God, just keep us from evil in this upcoming new year. We just give you praise. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last part, last slide I want us to look at is I want us to pray for our church. And this is what I want us to close out with tonight. And I hope that you'll take this verse. It's just one verse. Open it up as you think about your goals. As you think about some dreams, some things you'd like to see happen. Uh, I'm not one that writes a New Year's resolution. I'm not here to condemn you if you do. But you better make sure that you're including God in your plans. Amen? It, we need to make sure that He's the one who's directing our footsteps. And uh, if you set some goals, though, you have set them, some ambitions, there's nothing wrong with that in the new year. But trust the Lord to help you. And pray into these things like we have prayed into tonight, that God would help you and that He would keep you from evil, that He would enlarge your territory. And I believe He wants to respond to that and help you and your family. But let's pray these for our church tonight. You can go ahead and put those up, So, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as I exhibit proper faith in Jesus and the cross, we ought to pray, would you bless Finished Work Worship Center, indeed. And think of some ways that God can bless our church. I'd like to see these empty chairs filled with people. Amen? That would be one of the greatest ways that God could bless Finished Work Worship Center, that He would 
uh, use us to be the church that he's raised us up here in Colorado Springs to be. We can pray, God, would you please enlarge Finished Work Worship Center's territory in missions and world evangelism. Amen. We're believing God to help us double our mission support. For us to do more in helping the homeless, reaching out in nursing home ministry, touching people right here in these neighborhoods around the church. We can ask the Lord to enlarge our territory. Uh, we can pray that God will be with Finished Work Worship Center, that when people come into our services, they sense the manifest presence of God. Amen? They're able to uh, experience intimacy and a closer fellowship with God because He's moving in our services. We can pray that way. And we can pray that God would keep Finished Work Worship Center from evil and help this church not to cause pain, but to be a help and a comfort in this community. And so let's close out just praying for our church tonight. And I encourage you again, let's be praying for our own lives, for our families, for our church uh, a lot over the next week or so, that God would do some great things as we come into the new year. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this church. We thank you for Finished Work Worship Center, for seven years of ministry and all the good things that you've done for us, Lord God, lives we've been able to touch with the gospel of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Lord, we believe our best days are in front of us and not behind us. Lord, I pray that you'll give us an anticipation of the good things that you want to do here in this church and through this church in Colorado Springs. Lord, I pray that you would bless Finished Work Worship Center indeed. God, that we would see a powerful move of your Spirit in our services, in our outreaches, in our activities in this new year. God, may we see you uh, right, right, raising the level to a higher level, Lord God, in 2020, as far as your spirit moving, as far as uh, the gospel going forward. God, help us to, to come up another notch, to know, God, that you're using us. Lord, we pray that you would enlarge our territory, God, our sphere of influence, the people that we can reach out to through the homeless ministry, through nursing home ministry through reaching out to people in the neighborhoods and the businesses right here around the church. God, enlarge our territory. Let us see a harvest of souls brought in through this church and our efforts as you direct us, as you guide us, as you anoint us to do the work that you placed us here to do. God, we pray that you would uh, be with Finished Work Worship Center. Let people come here and know that your presence is here. Lord, that when they come here, they can... Uh, experience intimacy with you. They can experience a greater, closer fellowship with you. May that be so in our church at Finished Work Worship Center. And Lord, we pray that you'll keep this church from evil. Keep us from uh, divisions and strife and contention that the enemy would try and sow among the members of this church. God, we want to be a church that's bringing help, that's bringing comfort, that's bringing joy and hope and peace to our community and not pain. And so, Lord, I pray that we'll fulfill every purpose, every plan that you have for us as a church. God, we just praise you. Lord, we thank you for what you've spoken to us tonight in this simple verse, the prayer of Jabez, 1 Chronicles 4.10. God, I pray that we'll pray into it as we look at our goals, our dreams, our ambitions for 2020. Lord, I pray that we'll be wise and include you in all of our plans. Lord, we just pray your blessings upon us, your blessings upon our family your blessings upon this church. Give us a great new year in your presence. Bless us as we leave this place tonight. Help us to put into practice all that you've spoken to us in this service. And we'll give you glory. We'll give you praise for all that's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you.